Hi YouTube, I'm OP Commanders, creator of the Banner Project, and today I'm going to be talking about how to design engaging boss fights. However, apparently I should do this at the start of the video, so as much as I hate to ask, like, subscribe, etc, all that crap that comes with YouTube. Right then, first off, housekeeping. So I'm going to be trying out a new format with this devlog, and it's, you know, you, the unique take of talking into the microphone. I know, a shocking revelation to be sure. But to give you some context, I'm the developer of the Banner Project and I'm going to be basically just kind of going over some of my design philosophies in this kind of format, how I make things in the game and stuff. So to give you context on the Banner Project, it's an indie game project by yours truly, where Banner has to stop the villainous Queen of Hearts from using the Sword of Darkness to conquer the planet Noth. The game is a 2D action platformer with inspirations from various boomer shooters. So, let's move on to the main topic of hand for our first devlog. The natural starting point. Boss fights. Wait, really, boss fights? Yes, absolutely boss fights. So, the reason why I'm starting with boss fights is simply because they're a personal favourite of mine to design. And I really like talking about them. Plus, I also kind of have to create a new first boss to replace the Seraphim, this guy, in the game. So, naturally, I thought it was an excellent starting point. So, how do you start on boss fight design? Well, first off, you've got to think of your inspirations. For me, there's a few key games I personally enjoy the boss fights from, such as Undertale, Toho, and Ultra Kill. I know a very cohesive selection of games that definitely, like, gel together perfectly. But knowing this, I'm able to come up with some basic ideas for how I want the structure of the boss fights to work in my game. In the beginning, simple stuff like, you know, I want a projectile focus, I want smaller detailed phases that change stuff in the fights, and the key takeaway I got from these games is the boss fight should have this feeling of a dance. I know it's a bit of a strange thing to state, but there's a certain zone and feeling to boss fights that I really like in some games that I want to try and emulate with Banner. Now, one of the key elements of this boss fight design theorem is the feeling of mastering each element of the fight and coming together to engage the player in that final like attempt push. Now, first off, this Serapin simply won't do, I'm not diving into character design here too much, that could be a separate devlog, but allow me to introduce Sia, the Rakilla Rabbit, the first new boss of Banner and our example boss for today. Now, I have broken my boss fight design theory down into a few steps. First off, the basic pattern. As shown by Sia here, the basic pattern is what I consider to be the most, boss's most basic attack. As I said, this game focuses on projectiles, so in this case, Sia has a three-shot basic combo. She fires three slow projectiles, and this is the most basic of basic patterns I would do. Since Sierra is the first boss, she has to just kind of introduce the concept of bosses to the player, which is a whole, like, different level to the fight. You've got to make sure the player understands what a boss fight is in your game, coming into it. So, in this case, Sierra fires this fairly slow pattern just to start off with. It's really not that hard to avoid. Also to keep in mind for the basic pattern, or any pattern, is how the boss moves. Sierra's movement is fairly simple, as she alternates between two points and fires off her basic attack. The next step is what I'd like to term the additional mechanic, for example the beam attack in Sierra's fight. While this type of beam is used more commonly later in the game, since this is the first boss, the introduction to the beam is more than supplementary for an additional mechanic. No, I would normally avoid introducing new mechanics to the player in a boss fight, unless, like in this case, the boss fight is built around the introduction. Never just send something at the player without thinking. Now, with this fight footage on screen, there's an issue. See, while the beam attack has the red line to show where it's going to land, it could still blindside the player, as this is a new mechanic, after all. So I'll introduce something key to any good boss fight design, telegraphing. Well, what is telegraphing? Well, put simply, it's the act of showing the player what to expect. For example, take this shooting pompon found in the first stage. This simple foe shoots one projectile at the player, and it's also the first enemy to use projectiles in the game, which is why I believe telegraphing was very important for this. Notice how as the attack starts, there's an animation to show that something's about to happen. The red flashing eye in this case. That's telegraphing. So applying this to the boss fight, I created an animation to show the player that the beam attack is coming, so they can be aware of it. Always keep the concept of telegraphing in mind when designing your boss fights. It's key to making something that feels fair while also engaging, allowing you to use harder attack patterns and things in your bosses, but without the player feeling like, I just got hit by like 600 projectiles, 
Keep in mind as well, you can also use other forms of telegraphing other than just animation. For example, with the beam attack, there's an audio cue associated with it. This is another form of telegraphing to let the player know that this attack is coming. Alright, it looks like we have a good foundation for our boss fight. The next step is advancement. This is a fairly simple concept compared to the last ones. In this case, advancement is simply testing the player on things they already know, i.e. make it harder. No, it's not that simple. In this case, the advancement for Siaz's fight is as her HP gets lower, the basic attack becomes faster, as well as her movement. In addition, she incorporates more challenging patterns, such as this 360 spread shot and this double beam attack. These are gradually introduced throughout the fight. Don't just throw like three or four advancement patterns at the player at once, otherwise they'll just get confused. Let the player get used to each pattern and then feel ready to move on to the next one. The quicker the player does the fight, by tying this to HP of course, it means that if a player is skilled and hitting the boss quite a lot, these may come in quite quickly, but if a player is struggling and going slower, they won't bring in a million and one attacks at once. But you know, these are all column elements that I'm introducing in this boss fight that I'll build on later in the game, so keep that in mind. If you introduce something in an earlier boss fight, you could build on it later. But for now, we're just testing the player on this basic knowledge before we allow them to advance in the game. The next step of designing a boss fight for me is the personality of the fight. This element is the idea that, well, without any personality, the fight won't really stand out. All the bosses will kind of just blend together and end up being boring. So in Banner's case, this can be accomplished for a few methods. First is intro and outro dialogues for the fight. This is some cutscenes that play before the fight begins. Uh, as well as some mid-fight dialogue, for example. This personality can also be shown through th like things like animation and stuff. You can use this to show you know, different emotions from the bosses and make the players really resonate with the character. The character of the boss is really key to the final thing that I think is important to Banner's boss design and that's what I call the signature attacks. Now this is quite a key concept in Banner. The signature attacks are inspired by a few different bullet hell mechanics like the Toho spell cards and things, where basically the bosses have these very big set patterns that do these big overarching attacks and the, the player is actually focused on pure dodging here. Considering I plan to make these generally a lot harder than I'd make a standard pattern, the player will have to, you know, deal with new types of projectiles, maybe something quick, or really be tested on existing mechanics. So when it comes to designing these patterns, it's important to create, you know, this feeling to the boss fight. So the signature attacks are a very key aspect of what makes Banner's bosses unique in the genre, and one of the things that I think really adds an extra level to these fights. For example, uh, Sierra's pattern is showing on screen right now, Obviously, it's quite basic because Sierra has, um, you know, been the first boss, so we can't really do anything too elaborate. We're just testing the player on what they've learned throughout the fight. But also, there's some comedic moments where she rides this tricycle on screen. <laughs> this um, helps showcase the personality of the character and make it more memorable. Anyway, this is uh, the basically that is a conclusion for my designing boss fights and sort of the steps that go towards creating and designing an engaging boss fight within the banner project at least. So I hope you enjoyed and please enjoy this showcase of the full CF fight without me talking. Banner girls start. Mm.